Hello and welcome to our fireside, fireside chat with Luc de Witte and we're talking about Gato today. My name is Sabine Lobnik and I'm, I have prepared a lot of interesting questions about this new association starting with its name. So the short form is Gato and it stands for? Yeah, I'm very sorry for that. It's a long name. <laughs> it's the Global Alliance of Assistive Technology Organizations. <laughs> Wow, that is a long name. So yeah. what what is hidden behind it? And I tie that already to the tricky question, why another association? What is the impetus behind it? Why do we need yet another organization? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, I had some sleepless night about that. <laughs> um, there are, of course, many organizations. Uh, GATO is an umbrella of existing organizations. Uh, like the Triple ATE in Europe, uh, like RESNA in the United States, uh, RESCO in Korea, uh, assistive technology organizations who already collaborate for some time, but we have now said, well, there are so many global issues that where uh, exchange of knowledge and, and working together is important to really solve them. And we need a kind of umbrella. Uh, that, that's what we are. You mentioned so many global challenges. Can you tell us two, three of those that we get a notion of which direction the association goes into? Um, well, the direction is, is uh, not so easy to talk about uh, because we are, we, we are trying to find out, of course. But if you look at what's happening at this conference, you see where the global challenges are. Uh, there is, on the one hand, there is a fantastic uh, potential of technology. You see so many uh, uh, brilliant innovations here. Uh, but on the other hand, we know that many people, most people in the world, have no access to all these innovations. That is the main challenge. Uh, and that is something that every uh, all our member organizations try to improve in their own region or country where they are active. Uh, we, we, our, our mission is to, to create a world where everyone who needs it has access to assist technology solutions. Uh, but that's not so easy. And that, that's the global challenge that connects us all. And how did you come up with the idea of creating GATO? Because I know you are past, past president of Triple ATE, but usually, well, we have already lots of associations. H how did the idea come up now to create a new, a new one? Um, it is not really now. Uh, we have created, established the, the formal organization recently, a year and a half ago. Uh, but there was, of course, a longer existing uh, collaboration between the member organizations, between some of the member organizations. Uh, we, we informed each other about us, our conferences, we invited presidents uh, in all directions, uh, but there was not a real um, a shared action. Uh, and that's what we want to change. And the reason uh, is, of course, that, that um, yeah, the attention for this field has grown enormously, uh, pushed by the GATE initiative of WHO. Uh, but also by this resolution uh, of the WHO where that says uh, assistive technology is, is a human right for everyone. Um, uh, so that made it stronger and more important um, to do something about it. And uh, it became more and more clear that this global collaboration is really essential to tackle these major problems. And that has just grown inside. Uh, we, we, we have, it's not new, but, but now we realize, well, we have to do something. And today, GATO really covers the whole world. You have associations from all world regions? Uh, unfortunately, not the whole world, for two reasons. Um, in spa some parts of the world, there are no established uh, organizations like Triple ATE in Europe. Uh, we are trying to help those organizations to create themselves, uh, to, to establish themselves. Uh, so there are uh, ongoing talks with some African uh, institutions to create an African association. In Latin America, we try to do that. Um, so that's one side uh, that we don't cover those uh, parts of the world yet. Uh, and the other missing part is basically China and, um, and Russia. So let, uh, let's say the, uh, there are some r similar organizations in, 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 in mainly China and some other Asian countries. Um, we're trying to connect, but it is not so easy to connect that in, in the same organization, let's say. Okay. But that is definitely something we want. Yes. All right, so beyond the rallying of the associations, yeah. in this one year and a half the guard already existed, I think you already launched several or at least one really big initiative, this global consultation. Yeah, 
<coughs> well, we have done a few things. One is that we try to organize uh, international sessions, global sessions, uh, in the existing conferences. For example, the AAA, AAA conference, we organized a session together with Resna. Uh, well, we try to, to uh, plug in international components into the existing uh, conferences, but that's the easy part. Uh, recently, we took an initiative to um, collect the, the challenges in the field of uh, outcome and impact measurement of assistive technology. And that led to really a global process with regional consultations in different parts of the world. I think a bit more than 300 people have uh, participated in that process. And last week at the Global Disability Summit, we have had a session where we presented part of the results and are now creating a list of priority issues. And it's a very good example because what we saw <coughs> is that the problems we face uh, when it comes to outcome and impact measurement are basically the same all over the world. And that's an interesting uh, thing that, that happened during that session at the Global Disability Summit. People some suddenly realized, wow, I thought I was struggling with this alone, but, but my colleagues in New Zealand have exactly the same problem. Um, well, the challenge, of course, is now to take the next step and do something with that and translate it into action and policy. Uh, but this is a good example of what we try to do. I was in the session, and I was really interesting to see also the reactions of the people in the chat of what they were surprised by and what was evident to them and where you have the differences and where you have the common points. So you mentioned that now out of the many, many issues that were presented, you create a priority list. And what happens then with that priority list? Uh, well, that's part of the search. <laughs> um, we try to uh, bring that, of course, to the attention of, of the wider public. Yeah, so we will, uh, again, at the AAATE ICCHP conference, we will have a session where we present this and discuss it with the audience. We will do the same at other conferences uh, to influence the, the international agenda. Uh, we are not going to make uh, an outcome uh, assessment tool. Uh, that's for others to do. But we try to influence the, the global agenda. And it will find its way. We, we, I hope that people just pick these results and run away with them and do whatever they think is good to, to change it. <laughs> Perfect. So once you have concluded that consultation and the list of priorities and you have managed to, to deposit that with the policymakers yeah. that should hear it, what comes next? What comes next for GATU? What are the next initiatives? What is your vision for the next three years, for example? Where is the association headed? Um, well, we have to identify the really global issues that, that where it's evident that one plus one becomes three if you work together. Uh, the, these issues that cannot be solved by Triple ATE or RASNA or RASCO or Russia alone. Uh, one of these topics is clearly um, the quality of service delivery uh, related to assistive technology. Uh, so, so we know that uh, worldwide this is an extremely fragmented field with very different procedures. So we think it's important to develop some global quality criteria, guidelines, standards, if you wish, uh, about what are the minimal criteria for good service delivery. That's one of the topics we have uh, developed a proposal for, and we're now looking at, yeah, can we bring that further? Uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, one of the next examples. Uh, there's also similar topics when you think about education and the role of technology in education, that's also really an international issue. Uh, but we have to be careful that we don't um, take over the roles, uh, we don't take over the role of uh, our member organizations. Because if there are topics that, for example, ISPO can do, let them do it. Uh, that, that we have not, we don't, should not compete with our member organizations. Only pick up these topics that are really uh, shared. Right, I think that is one of the challenges of this particular construction, that you are an association of associations, yeah. right? Yeah, that's de definitely a challenge. Uh, and we have to find out. So, um. But in, in, in setting up GATO, in creating it, how do you actually go about rallying the associations? Uh, just by talking, by uh, doing things like this, <laughs> uh, being around, making connections. That, that, that's what we do. Wonderful. And then talking about being around, what, how could the members or the, the audience of the Zero Project Conference 
when they hear about assistive technology, because, and this is also many, many people coming from specifically the countries you mentioned and the world regions that need this connection, how, how can they connect with GATO? Uh, not directly. Uh, GATO is, as I said, an association of associations, but they can, of course, become member of the underlying organizations and through that channel uh, connect to these global issues. And of course, when we organize uh, sessions around conferences or specific uh, initiatives, people can join. Uh, but the, the most important channel is through the member organizations of GATO, because that's where, where the real thing happens. Okay, and then if we move a little bit on the higher level for the Zero Project team and the Zero Project conference, how do you see the collaboration going forward? Is there something that you could add to the Zero Project conference or that vice versa the Zero Project could do to um, support the work of the GATO in the coming years? Um, I think we can mutually benefit from each other and support each other, absolutely. What I see here is, is a fantastic um, uh, network of, of innovators, of people doing great things, which is exactly in the field that we are looking at. We have a network of experts, of professionals. We have links to many, many research groups in universities. Uh, so we could, I think, look for um, yeah, using those networks uh, mutually. Uh, and I don't know how that exactly uh, looks in a few years, but, but I think there are many opportunities. And we just have to explore. Perfect. So then when you have, if you have a question, oh no, sorry, not a question, but a message. We have many policymakers also in the audience. What, they sh what should they take home with them? What would be the homework you give them? Oh, <laughs> listen carefully to what's happening, to what's happening and, and use the existing knowledge. One of, that's a bit of a personal frustration. In this field, we have seen uh, some other um, organizations coming up, uh, uh, trying to invent the wheel again. And we already have so many wheels. We use us, use these networks that exist. Uh, I think that's, a, that's an important message. Wonderful. And then I would switch back to your personal experience of the Zero Project Conference. We are only one day and a half in, so at midterm, I would say. <laughs> what struck you so far? Was it just that you say, okay, great, finally we can connect again, or was there something standing out where I said, oh yes, that's one of the points that dropped off the agenda over the past weeks and is good that it's back up? Um, <coughs> well, what I like most is, is hearing all these fantastic innovative ideas, all these initiatives that, that are presented from all over the world with, with some really exciting uh, yeah, new things. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I like most. And what is the homework you take home with from the conference? Uh, try to connect uh, those. And I'm personally in the lucky situation that I just started a new job and have the opportunity to, to build a research group in a new university. Uh, and I took a lot home for that. But that is my personal uh, mission here. So. That's wonderful, Luke. Then thank you very much for presenting to us the new association. And I'm looking forward to reading and hearing a lot about GATO in the future. I hope so too. Thanks a lot. Thank you.